For those of you who didn't know, crabs are superior beings. In the real world, crabs have independently evolved about a dozen different times, an evolutionary process called carcinization. Evolution, apparently, is weighted in favor of crabs, and not even the war droids of the Star Wars universe were immune to this evolutionary pull. The LM-432 crab droid is proof that the obvious superiority of crab-like forms is evident even across universes, not least because the crab droid itself was a highly effective war machine. In this video, we'll be analyzing the crab droid in detail. Attention, Sergeant on deck! At the start of the Clone Wars, Wat Tambor pledged the Techno Union droid army to the service of Count Dooku, pooling it with the private militaries of the other Separatist Council factions to form the CIS droid army. The bulk of the Techno Union's contributions came in the form of droid infantry. After all, Bactoid Combat Automata, the designers and producers of the B1 and B2 battle droids, was a Techno Union member. But the Techno Union contributed larger tank droids as well, most notably the Octoptara Combat Tridroid and the Octoptara Magna Tridroid, which we've made a video about recently. But as the Clone Wars went on, the Techno Union began producing new war machines for the Separatist cause as well. The LM-432 Crab Droid was one of these. Originally, they were designed for use on marshy worlds where many of the Confederacy's other armored vehicles had trouble operating, but the Crab Droid model ended up being the basis for a plethora of variants, which were meant to fill various gaps in the Confederacy's vehicle arsenal. Much like crabs in the real world, Crab Droids expanded to fill a variety of niches, proving themselves the superior droid design as well as the superior evolutionary template. In all seriousness, the Techno Union had a very simple reason for just reusing the Crab Droid model like this. They usually performed alright on the battlefield, but more importantly, they were a very cost-effective design. To quote a Techno Union risk assessment report, Crab Droids have a subpar targeting percentage, but deliver a profit of 48,000 credits per unit. They might not win the war, but they could save the Techno Union's fiscal quarter. This sort of approach to military structure, for the record, is at least part of why the Confederacy lost the Clone Wars. The LM-432 Crab Droid's basic design was simple. The droid consisted of a main body with six heavily armored legs. Their size was variable based on the specific model of the droid. Some Crab Droids were just a meter tall, while others were nearly seven meters tall. The Crab Droid's main body was small and compact, though the degree of this again varied based on model. This main body always contained the droid's onboard power plant and droid brain, however, as well as a bunch of sensors mounted on the droid's face. These included three photoreceptor eyes and a set of antennae, which added to the droid's crab-like appearance. Most of the crab droid's bulk, no matter the variant, was taken up by its legs. Some crab droids had six legs, while others only had four. Either way, a crab droid's legs consisted of three segments. One that usually extended straight down under the droid, one of varying length that extended outwards, and a large heavily armored lower leg. The crab droid's four legs featured its heaviest armor plating, and crab droids could use them as shields to protect their eyes or other weak points from incoming fire. These armor shells were extremely durable, and thinner armor plating was located on the main body of the droid. Its body armor was less comprehensive, however, and while its face was well protected, its back was not. Over the course of the Clone Wars, clone troopers quickly learned that they could easily take out a crab droid by sneaking up behind it, climbing onto its back, and emptying a clip into the weak points in its armor. The forelegs of the crab droid also boasted two other key features. They were twipped with claw-like duranium stabilizers, which could burrow into the ground to stabilize the droid by locking in place. These stabilizers could pierce bedrock and allowed the crab droid to climb up near vertical cliffs with ease. The forelegs also contained powerful vacuum pumps, which were meant to act as, for lack of a better term, weapons. These were meant for use in the swamp environments the crab droid was originally designed for. They could be used to suck up mud and swamp water, and then unceremoniously spray them at the enemy, covering their visors or sensors in gunk, and more often than not, inciting frustration and confusion. We don't know what intern at the Techno Union came up with that, but we hope they got a medal for it. 
Because of these mud spewers, clone troopers nicknamed the crab droid the muckraker, and we're sure these droids lived rent free in their heads for getting swamp gunk all over their nice white armor. But the crab droid didn't just have prank weapons, it was also equipped with a pair of chin mounted blaster cannons. These were roughly as powerful as a droidica's blaster cannons, and they had several firing models, including linked fire, which was particularly devastating, and rapid fire. These laser cannons made the crab droid extremely effective against infantry or light vehicles, and in the right circumstances, its mud cannons could probably blind an ATTE2, which is a rather funny thing to picture. Of course, the crab droid's legs themselves were also weapons of a sort. They were so well armored that they could essentially be used as clubs, whacking clones and loyalist soldiers out of the way. All told, the crab droid was a pretty versatile war machine, though it certainly wasn't perfect. It had weak points, as we mentioned earlier, and it also wasn't terribly accurate with its guns, as we also mentioned earlier. Everything we've discussed so far applies primarily to the two most common crab droid variants. The six-legged anti-infantry model that appeared in Revenge of the Sith, and the slightly larger four-legged anti-infantry model that appeared in the Clone Wars. But there were a few other notable variants. One of these was a mini crab droid that was designed for espionage instead of combat, and while this droid was only briefly mentioned in a source book, we already want to keep one as a pet. The other variant you might remember from the original Clone Wars micro series, a 7 meter tall tank droid variant. The tank droid variant of the crab droid was mostly just an upsized and more heavily armored version of the LM-432, but it also came with an unusual secondary weapon, a bubble wart projector. These were obscure Gungan weapons that projected energy shield bubbles around their targets, trapping them in a bubble of plasma that was impossible to escape from the inside. These were meant to capture Jedi, immobilizing them and essentially taking them out of the battle unless they had an ally around to pop their bubbles. The earliest known deployment of the crab droid was on Rhodia near the start of the war, but after their introduction, these droids quickly became a staple of the CIS droid army. Often serving alongside a similar kind of droid walker, the DSD-1 dwarf spider droid, the crab droid was most commonly deployed on worlds with rough or uneven terrain. These included swamp planets, which they were designed for, but it also included mountainous worlds like Lola Seyu, where their stabilizers came in handy. On Lola Seyu, a small army of crab droids was assigned to defend the citadel. The first notable battle to involve crab droids was the Battle of Malastare, in which many were destroyed by the Republic's electro-proton bomb. They were especially common during the Outer Rim sieges, where Republic forces faced them en masse in the Battle of Tar Morden, Coruscant and Utapel. After the end of the Clone Wars, all surviving crab droids were shut down, but this wasn't the end of their service history. The Techno Union had produced so many of them that there were tens of thousands just sitting around in warehouses across the Outer Rim, and criminal groups or bounty hunters had an easy time stealing and reactivating them for personal use. The Galactic Empire also seized tens of thousands of crab droids, and during the Imperial Era, it actually made use of them now and again, deploying the old Separatist units as part of the Imperial Army. So that's our look at the crab droid, the Star Wars Walker with quite possibly the funniest gimmick weapon. But what do you think? Do you like the crab droid or the dwarf spider droid better? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.